So anyway, we'll just go ahead and get everything jumping. Today is Sunday, September 8th. So welcome to Game Plan Sunday. Uh, we're going to take a look at the markets, uh, what occurred over the past week, what we noticed coming down the pipeline. How can we strategize with the information and the data that we have so we can make some money in the markets this week? Uh, make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that share button. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're live right now. Get it while you can get it. Uh, and make sure you subscribe so that you can get the, the playbacks and everything like that as well. So um, anyway, let's jump into it, man. So last week, last week was pretty crazy. OK, um, I don't know if you guys noticed the whole theme of last week. We had a lot of big data that came out last week, a lot of major uh, economic uh, data points that came out. And for the most part, the data was bad. You see what I'm saying? The, the data was bad. <laughs> um, we had wheat manufacturing numbers. OK, which we're already showing manufacturing is heading into a recession. And then we also had. Uh, what else did we have last week? We had uh, the job numbers. So Friday we had the job numbers that came out. The job numbers are so weak. It was it was crazy. So you had one hundred and thirty thousand jobs that were produced. And now you got to keep in mind what's good, David. I see you, my man. You got to keep in mind from last week. I mean, from the last uh, job numbers, um, they had revised those numbers down. Remember, they revised the job numbers down. Every freaking month. It's like when they post the first numbers, Wall Street get excited about it. But just keep in mind, as you guys been you know, on this journey with me, you're getting a lot of wisdom that the gurus don't teach you and show you and all this other stuff because they just all about trade, 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 trade. You got to have some wisdom about this, too. So you can understand what's going on, you know, macro level. So that's why I try to tie it all in together because that's what helps you know, make me and make my decisions. But just pay attention to like when they drop the job numbers, they're never the real numbers. Right. They're always revising those numbers down, but they make good headlines for Wall Street uh, just to tie a story in for the reason why they're going to try to you know, juice the markets up. Right. So you'd be like for no no apparent reason where well, the markets should have been rallying last week. And that should not have the, the, the market should have been rallied uh, last week. We're going to cover why, you know, the, 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 the reason why. Um, so but basically we have weak job numbers. Those numbers came out one hundred and thirty thousand. And you can't just take the numbers at surface level. They always drop the surface level numbers. You know what I'm saying? If y'all in the group and y'all know I post the articles, I post like some content in there. I try not to hit you with the nerd stuff, but just post in there a little bit of what's popping within these numbers. Because you, you'll see, you know, Trump and everybody. Oh, good numbers. Good job numbers. Woo, woo -hoo. But you have to see the breakdown of what jobs they are creating, which, you know, that's what lets you know, you know, how uh, how, how are the job numbers growing? Like it really, you got to get to underneath it. And so when you look at the 130,000 jobs that they said was produced in the month of August, well, um, you got to remember, these are just the first numbers. They're going to revise them down. They may revise them over 20,000 jobs. So they say 130,000. Uh, now we get the numbers back next month. They may say it was 100,000, right? Because they always revise them down. Just like they took 20,000 off the ones from last month. So again, 130,000 news headline. Uh, let's just say, Based on what we know, they're going to reduce it down to probably like 110,000, 100,000. 100, so it's really not 130,000. And then within those jobs, 30,000 of those freaking jobs were um, were federal government jobs uh, where they hiring people to do the 2020 census and they're temporary jobs. So these are not permanent jobs. These are not the jobs that you want. Uh, federal jobs are not jobs that are pr you know production jobs. This is taxpayer money. Tax, you know, government don't make money. So, again, you know, they're running up deficits and all this other stuff so they can take care of these things. That is not a sign of growth. So you got to fact out the federal stuff. So, again, you're taking off 20,000 off the uh, the jobs that they're giving any damn way because they're not real uh, and they're temporary at that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so from that, then you also saw further weakness. And then they were talking about uh, and I posted this in a group. I don't know if you saw this or not, but there is a certain section and I posted on Instagram. Too, I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, there is a section in there uh, where it was talking about the uh, involuntary jobs. I don't know if y'all know about involuntary jobs, uh, but it's about involuntary part time jobs. So you got to pay attention. Just don't take what's you know, on a surface level um, for what it is. You have to dial deeper. Um, they're talking about the um, involuntary part time jobs. And that was the interesting piece of that. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm on the Instagram page and showing you guys. I posted this all on the Instagrammy. Make sure y'all are following. If you're not, it's on the Instagram right there. Jobs growth. I did the whole thing in there. So I'm going to just read it to you a little bit just so you can see 
This is what's popping, okay? So they said jobs rose by 130,000 in August, lower than July's numbers that were revised down by 20,000 to 159,000. And 25,000 other jobs created were in federal government, largely reflecting the hiring of a temporary workers for the 2020 census. Notable job gains also occurred in healthcare and financial activities while mining uh, lost jobs. So mining lost jobs, healthcare gains from jobs, but there's really only 130,000. If you can look at the, uh, the chart, you can see it's, it's trending down. All right. You can see it's trending down. We're losing jobs. This is a sign that the economy is slowing down. So when people talk about recessions, this is what they're looking at. These type of numbers. And then on the second paragraph down here, again, I, you know, these are my words. I have to paraphrase. Um, but the number of persons employed part time for economic reasons. This is called involuntary part time workers. The number of persons employed part time for economic reasons. This means that you're working a part time job. And you don't want to. It's involuntary. You just got to the word psychology makes things sound pretty. But what it really means is that you have people that are working part time jobs because they have to and they don't want to. I said the number of these people increased, increased going up by three hundred and ninety seven thousand to four point four million in August. These individuals who would have preferred full time employment were working part time because their hours have been reduced or they were unable to find full-time jobs. Okay, this is out there. I posted for you guys so you know what's going on. So, you you know, again, you just can't take what all the experts and gurus talking about. You got to look for yourself. If you don't read, you don't study, you will not know. All right? And the more I learn, the more you guys learn, because I'm giving it back to you. So within these numbers of this strong job growth, you say you got this strong job market, and, uh, you know, it's growing. We got jobs. What kind of jobs do we have right there? I just showed you again, the jobs are not even pumping strong. They're going down, they're trending down. And within those jobs, we have people who would like to work full time jobs, but there are multiple job holders. There's other, you know, economic data that I, I haven't even published, but you guys can look them up where they have multiple uh, job holder data. And we had an all time high of people that are working more than one job. That is not a good sign. So you have one in the boasting about the jobs, but then Everybody else knows in the markets what kind of jobs are those, right? Wall Street just want the headlines so they can pump up the markets. It's all fake, all right? Pump it up. You get in for the ride. Try to make you some money. But really, you're looking at a weakening economy. Again, we had the manufacturing numbers weak uh, underneath the 50 line threshold. That means a contraction that goes into a recession. Um, and then we have these job numbers that are posting that's showing mad people. A lot of people are working part time jobs. And they don't want to. They really want to work full time, but they can't find the jobs. So <clears throat> then you also see that they're talking about uh, uh, unemployment rates are at a has historic low. And yes, the unemployment rates are at a historic low. But you got to understand how they capture this information, what they're leaving out of the information, what they're putting in. It's a certain time frame that these are surveys that they're doing. And so it's a certain time frame where people that's out of the workforce, they're not even included in those numbers. So <laughs> anyway, long story short. It's not as rosy as they try to have you to think. It's actually bad. Um, and, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions on that, just let me know. Put it in there. You know, we can always create dialogue. But just, you know, understand how to read these numbers, what's really going on. So that's what happened, you know, over the past week. We had all of this data to come out. And surprisingly, the markets actually were good. Now, why were the markets doing pretty good last week? Well, the headlines will tell you that China cut called back. China said that they're going to ready to meet at the table again in October with U.S. Next thing you know, you see the markets climb up. Now, what kind of level of manipulation is this? All right. Um, again, we got weak ass data. We got earnings as weak as hell. We got a slowing down economy. Uh, we have yield curve inversions. OK, it's all bad. And. Uh, you still see the markets will, will rally, right? This is when you get into this environment. This is the choppiness, all right. This is the, this is the dangerous environment. So y'all know we have times where I'm good at predicting the markets. I can see the trend. I'm like, okay, yo, this is where we're going at. And there are some times I tell you that it's cloudy, it's hazy. I I can't really, I can't really see because it's this like this choppiness, this level, these manipulations that's in there. So it makes it difficult. To navigate. Now, just think about it this way. 
if making the million in the stock market was so easy, everybody would be millionaires. If it was just one setup that can just get you there, everybody would be there. It doesn't work that way because it's not designed for everybody to win. You got to understand everybody can't be winners. You got to have winners. You got to have losers. And I'm talking subjectively, not really objectively, just subjectively from my experience of what I've seen the markets do, where basically um, we have algorithms, you know, computers, AI, artificial intelligence. Majority of what we're trading with are the algos, okay? <laughs> the algos are trading in the markets. There's nobody on Wall Street doing all the stuff you see in the movies that's old. Everybody's at home, like I'm at home, and everybody else at home or in their office is trading, okay? But you have the institutions, you know, these guys don't hire, you know, traders like me. They hire quants, people that can crunch them numbers. You see what I'm saying? And those numbers can, you know, crunch the patterns. They can predict the patterns and all this other stuff. So um, if you guys remember from last uh, Game Plan Sunday, we was talking about the markets in particular having a pattern set up that we uh, that is a uh, bull, uh, bearish flag. Let me see if I can pull that up here real quick. As you guys saw, this is again, this is the ES. And we, you know, we see the, the, the bear flag play in here. Right. And the way that this setup supposed to go is being up. That's where it's supposed to go. OK. The tricky thing about trading in this environment is that with the algorithms. They know what everybody is anticipating. And I'll show you guys where you can kind of look at some of the stuff. But um, basically, you got to look at the internals. OK. And so when they see everybody uh, get sucked up into a pattern. You know, they can see everybody get sucked up into, you know, a particular uh, sentiment, whether too many people are going bearish or too many people are going bullish. They they pull the switch. They flip the switch on you. Right. And then everybody who was in that direction, you know, they all get stopped out and they all lose money. And the algos pick up the, that money. So the Wall Street Jack boy suddenly becomes getting jacked. By Wall Street. <laughs> so you got to be careful with this. Um, and so what I pull, I pull up this uh, right now. I got the ES on, but I pull up the uh, the put call ratio. Uh, if you were looking at this. If you were. Uh, excuse me. If you were looking at this last week, then, you know, you could have been able to mitigate that switch. OK, because that switch, most people were short and then it went the total opposite direction. Even on bad news. So this is why we had to talk about what happened in the market. It was bad news, right? But what was ha happening is that it was too many people. There were too many people that were going bearish. So never follow. They talk about trend following, but, you know, you have to under understand, uh, you know, how all this stuff works. OK, so the put call ratio as it goes higher. That means that's more puts in the market. If it's lower, that means there's more calls. And so the parity between those two is basically, um, if you can see here uh, with my lineup, I got levels in here where I'm telling myself that, hey, when this hits this level, set up longs. That means go the opposite direction. All right. <laughs> so I'll, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever taught you this or not. But again, this is what I've learned uh, over the years. So. I got this level here that's letting me know, hey, this is extreme put buying. Be careful before you enter to any kind of bullish setup, okay? And then we have the neutral zone, which is right here in the middle. This is neutral, okay? And then I got the extreme call buying, right? I don't know if you guys can really see it because it's kind of really light green. But anyway, it's you extreme calls. And then it tells me here at this levels that you need to set up shorts, and so anyway, it's a lot of information to cover when you're looking at the markets real time. And that's why I try to have as many screens as I possibly can. So right now I'm only trading off of three screens, though. I mean, you don't actually need three screens. If you can get two screens, that's even better. Um, but you guys know you can, you know, squeeze all of these screens in one screen if you need to. But if this is something that you're paying attention to, then you would have caught the reversal there. Uh, and, it, and this is on the put call. I have this. I post uh, this is also this is a part of my uh, market internal. So uh, some some days in the group, I actually post. You know, the market internals first thing in the morning uh, and then headed into lunchtime, um, the internals, you know, what the internals are looking like. And so anyway, so that's what we caught last week. We got this level here that peaked up above that. And then we had too many shorts, basically. And they flip the switch. They make all those people cover their shorts. That creates buying because they got to buy back those positions and they creates the opposite move. 
So then everything moves the opposite direction. All right. So that's what happened. We had too many bears, people, too many people were bears. And so when you have too many bears in there, you got to start looking to play it the other direction because it's a game that's not designed for everybody to win. Everybody trying to go in for the win. The house is saying, no, 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 no. Like the Kimbe Mutumbo, boop, boop, slap you up real quick. Make it go the opposite direction. On what information? It's no information. There's no news. I just told you guys all the news is bad, which is terrible. So anyway, that's what you saw in the markets there. Um, let's go back to the uh, S&P 500. All right. So, yeah, go back to the S&P 500. You got to keep in mind, we had a squeeze in formation here as well. And so direction wasn't really clear because we knew we were in a choppy zone. Right. We already knew that we were in a choppy zone. So that was the, you know, the information that we have from last week is that this is a chop zone or it's also a bear flag. All right. That's the formation that we saw. But we really didn't have much information on where the direction was going to go. But if I was going to make an educated guess then it would have been down because of the bear flag. But you had to pay attention to that extreme levels on the put call ratio, which made everything flip the opposite direction. So when they stopped everybody out of their shorts, it went the opposite direction. There we have it. The squeeze here started to fire off long, which right now that's what it's doing right now. But it's really not a strong, it's not a strong level here. It's actually a little weak. And so um, this is some of the manipulation where you get, you know, everybody switching to go to the other side real quick. And once the sentiment shift again, then they'll shake you back the other way. Because then you'll see that this goes back this way, come back down and break. Right. Uh, so maybe you get like a Monday full of excitement. Tuesday may go sideways. Next thing you know, you could be right up here at the previous high level before they break it back down on you. Anyway, so this is like the level of you know, trickery that you have to be careful of. And, uh, you know, just keep in mind, patience is a position, as I told you guys last week, when we get in that chop zone, you just can't be out just throwing trades on, you know, every day, uh, size up the markets and, and get comfortable with the feel. You got to say, hey, what's going on? All right. And so when we see the markets, you know, rallying behind bad news, it doesn't make sense. It makes me take my hands off. I'm like, you know what? Because, you know, this, there's no order in this. I don't understand what's going on. Let me let me just size it up real quick, right? So that's where you have to approach that. Um, and then, excuse me. So we got this new levels here on the S&P 500, that uh, old high that is trying to chase up here, um, but it's extended. So you guys can see that uh, the S&P 500 is extended. And so I don't really expect it to break out into new highs this week, but we may get close up to these levels. I know that's where the market wants to go. We got to get above 3,000 first, right? So 3,000 is about right here in the zone. I think the market is going to try to chase this 3,000 tomorrow. Um, you know, uh, depending on there's no news, okay? And as far as the situation with China, um, it's old news, all right? It's not. The situation with China is, is crazy. It's kind of like if you guys know somebody that's in an abusive relationship and the guy beats his girl and he keeps telling his girl he's going to change and she keeps taking him back. And he never changed. He keeps on beating her. She keeps getting bloody and, and, and black eyes and stuff. But this is what this reminds me of. You guys know we've been, you know, this whole situation with China since last year still going on, still no trade deal. And we don't count on it being a trade deal. OK, it just don't even make any sense for them to enter into a trade agreement with Trump at this time because there's a chance that he could lose the 2020 election. So the goal for China is to hold out until 2020. You know, if he's polling low, that gives them more confidence in what they're doing. And it just sounds like they just keep suckering them in or, or is this a uh, uh, stock market manipulation, right? The plunge protects and things say, Hey man, everybody's talking about recession, this, that, and the third. We need to switch the, we need to flip the switch to make it go the opposite direction. You send Jay Powell out there. He had his uh, meeting out, out in, uh, in, um, um, what was it out, out in, uh, I think Zurich, uh, when he was out there meeting with the country over there, Jay Powell comes out and says, there's no signs of a recession. Um, you know, everything is doing great. They asked. The, and, and this crazy thing is, is that the uh, the uh, the leader from over in Zurich, he was talking like, no, it's bad. He said uh, he said that uh, 
um, we're so he said that their country is so small that they don't have an imprint in the in the world market, but America and Europe does. And he said that the the trade war is having a negative impact on his country, basically. Um, and they was just talking about trade. And Powell was like, "Well, I don't have nothing to do with that, right? Um, <laughs> that's you know, that's 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 out of our league. We don't deal with trade." But he's telling people that there's no risk of a recession. And oh boy, he didn't really come out and say it, but he was just letting them know trade is the biggest threat right now. And as you guys just remember, not only do we have the bad employment uh, economic uh, data from last week, but how 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 quick does the market forget that we had new tariffs that started on September first? That is bad. That's going to negatively impact the markets. That's going to negatively impact the earnings of the corporations. That's going to cause more inflation, which the Fed's and them, that's what they're trying to do, um, because the cost of your goods are actually going to increase. Um, so, again, you can't forget September 1st, we had new tariffs to come on. And then um, you had also some other issues from across the board uh, in England, you know. Uh, so you got to keep in mind all those political, you know, uh, uh, events they had, we're all in, in, intertwined with each other. So you got to pay attention to that, you know, CBOE and all of that. In fact, they're, um, they're going to have a report this week on Thursday. Uh, no, is it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. They're going to be talking about them cutting interest rates. Are they going to cut interest rates over in, in England? And again, uh, more than likely going to do it. Uh, our feds, we're going to have our meeting I think next week. Um, let's see. Yeah. So next week, our Fed meets uh, next week. And so uh, the market's already pricing in a rate cut, um, you know, quarter point basis. The Wall Street wants a freaking uh, Wall Street want a a 50 50 point basis cut. But Powell, I don't think he's going to actually go that far, uh, even though Trump and them want it. So, again, you have more tension with that. And again, good news is bad news in this in this environment. The bad news is the good news. You see, we had all bad numbers last week and the markets is rallying behind it. So it's a lot of manipulation going on. And as I told you guys previously, you got to be careful because what happens is the economy grows by you spending money. It slows by you stop spending money. And uh, if you look on Google, one of the number one search words is recession. It's finally hitting mainstream. We've been talking about it for, for, for months, since March, since the yield curves inverted. Now it's starting to come out because the two year, 10 year inverted and they can't ignore that. And that's all, that's pretty much an imminent sign of a recession that's coming. But they don't want to exacerbate the situation to bring it on faster. That means that they don't want you guys to know about it. They want you to stay ignorant and keep spending your money. They don't want you to slow down and save money like a responsible person should be doing right now. They need for you to spend money because that's what keeps the matrix going. And so they have to send out their puppets and, and people to tell you that it's not going to be this, it's not going to be that. I went to the longest bull market in history, 11, 11 years. You can't ask for nothing better. You know, um, it's time. So anyway, um, we had the meeting with, you know, Fed Powell speaking, you know, yesterday to try to calm the fears that, you know, sent him out to the calm the fears. But it was funny because the Swiss guy in Zurich, he was just like, man, listen, the trade war is messing, it's messing up our country. You know what I'm saying? And we're a strong country, but, you know, it's having an impact on us. We need for y'all to do something, basically. Um, but, you know, Powell said that's out of his league. You know what I mean? <laughs> what's good, Magic? I see. So anyway, that's what's happening right now. You also got to keep in mind there are these are major power changes that's happening. You got Russia, you got China, you got, you know, all these uh, countries is out here that's trying to get around the U.S. dollar. That presents a whole other risk that, you know, you, you got to keep your eyes on this. They're trying to get away from the dollar because they're starting to see the dollar as a liability now because of the trade war. So they're trying to form their own currencies and all this other stuff to get around it. It's kind of crazy right now. Anyway, it's a lot of information that's going on. A lot of stuff is more bad than it is good. Because it's more bad than it is good, you've got to be careful because the markets is just they just need any little piece of information to try to jump this up to highs to get people spending. You know, you need investor spending. We're already seeing, you know, businesses are not spending money right now. They're slowing down. And, uh, you know, we're looking at terrible numbers. All right. So, again, recession is still coming. You hear fake news to keep try to keep people spending because what happens when people stop spending, it makes the recession come on faster. So they can't have that. Right. They just need for you to just stay oblivious, watch the sports games, watch what's popping on TV. If you watching power, watch the new it movie or whatever, keep you entertained and, and keep you out of here. You know what I'm saying? Keep you still spending money like there's no tomorrow. But really, this shit is terrible right now. The markets is in a very bad situation. So just be careful. You know, tread on light, uh, 
uh, treading on thin water right here on thin ice. But um, as far as setups this week, what I actually look forward to doing this week is actually, you know, practicing some patience. All right. Um, I'm practicing some patience because we got to see how this thing is going to play out. Now, I will actually be looking more towards some long uh, exposure here. And, and this is the reason why is because if we take a look at all the safe havens, the safe havens are overbought uh, and, and it's time for them to breed. So we look at gold. And again, if you guys on the Facebook side, make sure you, uh, you know, join the chat if you want to see the full screens. Uh, Facebook don't give you like the whole screen so you can see everything. But just join the chat. The link is in the bio, of course. I'll make it so you see if you guys can see it. But we see we're taking a look at gold here. I got lots of levels in here. But basically what we're looking at is that gold came up to about this level here and got stopped out. That's the key level of resistance. Time to take a breather, buddy. You need to settle down. Price is way too high. You need to cut it. Got to squeeze on gold as well. Um, and so, but um, I don't think the squeeze is going to fire off, um, it, uh, especially not the early part of this week, maybe by the end of the week or next week. Um, but, you know, to see gold fall to about this level would be a great, uh, pullback area zone for a re-entry. So we're looking at about looking at the Fibonacci uh, level here, about 1487. My moving average about 1477. So it's anywhere about 1480. You can kind of add that around 1480. It'll be a good zone here uh, to inch up for the next leg up because again, it's more negative things that's happening in the market than it is good. So you can't trust the headlines. So you got to look at what's happening underneath the headlines, which we just covered. Um, so, again, gold needs a pullback. It's a little expensive, actually. Silver got his pullback. You know, silver got his pullback. Look at that. Look at that. And, and again, you know, if you can't afford gold, you can afford silver. I mean, stuff is like $18 an ounce. You can go buy some real silver. Uh, silver is going to move with gold. So, if you can't afford gold, get yourself some silver. Uh, these are safe havens. These are, you know, stores of of, of your money so that you can protect protect uh, your wealth from inflation. Anyway, we saw silver get, you know, overextended. Nice pop up if you made it in that move. Time to breathe. It's coming down to these levels and um, it still can come, come down some more. Um, key level that I'm looking at here, if silver does come down here to about the $17 level, that'd be a great area for, you know, to re-enter. So, because I'm looking at the safe havens needing to breathe, um, um, I'm more inclined to look for some positive exposure in the markets. Now, the Russell, out of everything, is still weak. If we look at the Russell. And the Russell is in its squeeze. And so this is going to be one of the main areas I'll be focusing on this week. Uh, that's what's up, Mark. I see you. So you silver heavy, right? Yeah, you got to get it. Um, because the NASDAQ and the ES is going to be pumping. But the Russell, again, this is domestic stocks but here. So all this uh, economic weakness in here should drag this down. We should see what we talked about this last week with that bear flag set up. And um, again, there was a lot of shorts that came in here. A lot of people got stopped out of those shorts right up in here. Everybody got short. Well, everybody started shorting here, so you had to get in there from here. But what the markets was expecting to go even further down. But instead, we had too many shorts in there. They flipped, switched, it popped up, they hit those highs. So ripped out the people that took the opposite side of the trades, they made money. But we clearly see it did not clear the 100, did not clear the 200, did not clear our 50, still traded underneath the 50. So with all that strength, it's still weak. And we don't expect for it to go higher than that. And so we'll see. It may come up here, may come up here a little higher. But if we see this breaks, then I'm looking for some short setups, right? Right in the Russell, because you want to short the week. So that'd be, you know, if you know, if I'm looking for some week, it'd still be in this area, the same way that we was looking at it last week, same thing this week. <clears throat> um, didn't have many other setups. Um, if you guys look in here, we got Snap. That looks pretty good. And this is in the high liquid setup, high liquid phase right there. You guys see snap is right there with a nice squeeze in here. 
Uh, the stock itself is cheap. So if you are a stock buyer, then, you know, this is a good you know place to enter in on Snap if you're going to be buying the stocks. Um, you know, we trade in options here. So, again, um, trading st uh, options here. We're in here for the quick money for maybe a couple, a week or two. And we get to get up out of there afterwards. So, anyway, we got the floors in here. We actually kind of like the setup, actually. Um, it's, it's holding this 50 moving average, as you guys can see. So that's the floor level. If it breaks that, then you know you're wrong. Um, the upside target is 19. So this is where you want to get out. All right, this thing pop up. You get out right here at this level. Now, a key level of resistance will be this 618 retracement. So this is like $17 here. So, again, we caught that level back here. It did not clear. I want to see how it clears here. Now, if you get in here, you can probably pull off a day trade if it pops up and hit this level and it stalls. If you up over 20 percent, then for me, just go ahead and take those rewards. Because right now you got to take profits really quick. The market is really choppy right now. So we can't expect to get home runs in this mess that we have here. OK, unless you, you know, you got some luck on your side. So try to play it, you know, what you can predict, what you can see. From that level to that level, if you can get a good 20 percent or, you know, anything above that is phenomenal. Don't get greedy. Not in this environment. This is not the environment they get greedy in. Uh, you see, we got the squeeze there. We got momentum shifting up. We got the trend that's participating. So if I'm looking at the stars in alignment, that's one. That's two. That's three. We caught the buy trigger back here. That's four. All right. Uh, it's trading above all of his moving averages. That's five. So this is all technical indications of. You know, snap going upwards um, again, first target, second target. So um, I will be watching that for some positive exposure. Uh, what else we got? Um, T-Mobile looking actually pretty good. Had a pretty strong Friday. I don't know if it's going to keep its juice or not, but we definitely want to watch it. Um Similar setup. You see the, the, the momentum shifting upwards. We got the trend shifting upwards. We got the squeeze intact and showing some bullish momentum in there. Uh, we got our floors in here at the 100. As you guys see, every time in the past, this is a clear floor. All right. So we know our risk to the downside. If you, you know, it breaches that you're wrong. Uh, but to the upside on its way up, this is going to be a key level of resistance. Um, do like the $83 target for the first target. Get out at the first target. If you if it continues and goes to the you know the next target, then that's great. But I wouldn't count on it right now because the markets are choppy. You will get caught up in a blender in this mess. So take profits off. Then you have to lower your targets. Even if you don't get fifty, it's okay. Take thirty and move on. Take thirty and move on and be happy that you ain't getting chopped up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I think. Uh, I'll take a look at one more. Did I take some from you guys? Um, Young Brands is up there, getting ready to tag that that take that that previous high out. Um, similar setup to the, to the last ones here. Okay, buy trigger there, momentum shifting upwards, squeeze intact, trend is participating, trading above is moving averages. We got the Fibonacci levels here. Boom. One target, boom, two target. It's right there. So that's these are the ones that I'm looking at going into this week. Um, I'll take some, some things from you guys here, and then we'll go ahead and bring the session to a close. If you guys got anything you want to look at, you know, just drop it in the queue. We'll take a look at it quick. Or if you guys got any value you want to add to the conversation about trade, uh, about the, um, the job numbers, um, about the manufacturing, the PMI numbers, you know, let me know. We got um, – we do have some information coming out. This week, I want to say we have, hmm, oh, I think it's the PPI numbers coming out. Uh, they're, they're, they're okay. The, the markets normally don't move that much on them. Let's take a look at Apple real quick because, you know, Apple coming out with that new phone. Let me see what they're looking like real quick. And again, man, ain't nobody really talking about the iPhones this year, man. I was just looking at an article. They were saying this is the lowest year 
uh, searches for Apple in the market. Like people haven't been searching for it. This is a, the lowest numbers they've, they're seeing with the new iPhone, actually. And a new iPhone, again, is, is coming out with, you know, limited technology in comparison to the new Samsung phone. You know, the new Samsung phone is killing it. And uh, it dropped first. It's already got the 5G and all that stuff already in it. And then you also got to consider all those Chinese phones, those Chinese companies. Those Chinese phone companies, I mean, they make phones better than the freaking Samsung. I mean, I mean, they got the freaking the, the latest and greatest technology and stuff. Because all these American companies, they're making their phones over there in China. China steal all the stuff and then they go make it better and compete with them. And that's what the, a lot of this, you know, beef is coming from. They call it IP theft. They're stealing the technology and they're actually using it for their advantage. Um, uh, the stock itself is uh, it's, it's bullish here, but nothing that I see that I want to play. But if you guys see something, let me know. My man, Ron B, what you got for me, playboy? Kellogg's. Okay, yeah, I was actually looking at, at Kellogg's here. So Kellogg's, yo, I actually eat the Kellogg's. I eat the Special K cereal, man. I, you guys probably don't like it, but I like the little yogurt and berry. It's pretty good. Got some fiber in there. But, um, yeah, so Kellogg's, uh, this setup here is actually, it's looking bullish as well. Um, as you guys see, we got the buy triggers here. We got the shift in momentum. As you see, momentum starting to shift there. We got the squeeze in place. Now, the trend hasn't started participating yet, but you can kind of see it's starting to try to hook up. You know, look like it's starting to hook up. We'll see. Uh, key thing on this is that the 786 retracement is holding it back, which is right there. And so you want to see how this thing is going to participate up against that 786. Now, we get a breakthrough, first target. At the 127 extension. Second target at the 161 extension. So I, I do like it to the to the bull side. Um, and then we have SYMC. This is an interesting one here, Ron. This is one of those interesting looking uh, cup and handle type situations. Y'all know Ron, he the king of the cup, cups and handles here. You know what I'm saying? We can see a situation like this, but this says to sell. I don't like that. I'm getting mixed signals here. You know, the squeeze is a one dot squeeze. It's not a valid squeeze. Momentum is starting to shift up a little bit. Trend is going up more, but that's like a little divergence in there. I don't know. You can play it out yourself. Let me know how this thing turn out. But it's not a clear setup for me. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to work out at the same time. So that's just, you know, for me, it's nothing that I, I want to play around with. Looks like I did some charting on it a while back. It's rough out there. Keith says it's rough out here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rough. Uh, it's rough out there. You see the markets are chopping right now. Which way they want to go, which way they want to go. You see them right here? Chopping. Chop, chop, chop. But you got to remember the bonds, you know, everything is, you know, as far as safety is a little over overbought. The risk is there. The fear is there. The bad data is there. But in a little over pricey, got to let that kind of shuffle this price out before they make it next, next legs up. Because everybody's buying the bonds and everything. Everybody's buying gold. Gold is like, I mean, everybody's just buying safety because of fears of the recession. And so right now you're going to get the pump fake. Punk fake is, you know, sent out the, you know, it's funny, man, when I was, um, um, geez, on studying, um, uh, Ray Dalio's books and I was telling you guys, I think about a couple of weeks ago, uh, what he was talking about, because again, when he does all his extensive studies and he traded those, those markets and things. And the thing that was interesting is that before the crashes, uh, came, they were manipulating the markets. They were actually sending people to put money in the markets on purpose to keep them spending money and to calm the fears. And he was talking about how they will also pay the New York Times to release an article that was positive, saying that everything was under control. And that worked out, I think, maybe like three times or so before uh, before the, the, the big crash. Um, and so and, and, and they, they couldn't they try to manipulate it again and it didn't work. But it reminds me of today because, again, you got all this negative information that's economic data driven um, that's bad. You know, they can try to pick and choose 
the good things that they want. But when you dial into those, it's really trash. You know what I mean? Um, so they try to manipulate it as much as they can. But the inevitable is that it's going to happen. They're just trying to. It's psychology. OK, spending people spending money is all psychology. Uh, people are happy in euphoria. They're going to spend more when they worry. They're going to try to save more. So they got to break you from that idea of trying to save or trying to buy gold and, you know, and try to protect yourself. They don't want you to do that. They want you to still participate in it. And that's how they keep it going. So you just got to be careful. It's a lot of trickery going on right now. So that's the that's the truth. That's what we got you know, going on right now. So hopefully you guys found this very uh, informational and uh, lots of wisdom here. Um, other than that, man, make sure you, you know, subscribe, you know, to the uh, social media feeds, invite somebody over. If you haven't, you know, checked out the classes and everything, make sure you get the courses. Um, we'll be doing some updates here before the year is up and uh, working on some of those things right now. I got a very, very busy schedule right now. But we're working through it. Um, yeah, definitely make sure you guys hit that Wall Street Jack boys right there on your timeline. On, you know, on the Instagrammy, you know what I'm saying? So I'll try to, you know, keep y'all popping. If y'all like it, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll put more out there. I'm just, I got to test the market with you guys. What do y'all like? You know what I'm saying? Y'all like the game plan Sundays? We bought it back. You know what I'm saying? We also open it up for everybody on the Facebook side. So, you know, we can get it popping. So uh, any feedback you guys have, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, we're still in the trap. We're still, you know, we're still hustling. We're still getting it. So I'm here with you guys. But uh, and I appreciate you guys. Y'all keep me on it. All right, Ron, Keith, Mia, Sergio, everybody on the Facebook side. I see you. Um, but you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. We'll catch up in the markets this week. OK, peace.